Straddling the northeastern border of the U.S. and the southeastern border of Canada, Lake Superior truly is a sight to behold not that you can see all of it at once, unless you happen to be looking from space, that is. In addition to being the world's largest non-saline body of water by surface area, it holds a whopping tenth of global freshwater. Naturally, the founding members of the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society, GLSHS, have always had a keen interest in scouring the depths and uncovering any historical secrets that it might hold. And when they started employing the latest cutting-edge technology, one exploration survey team made a discovery unlike any other. Researchers used a robot to comb the bottom of Lake Superior and came across an eerie scene. Founded in 1978, the GLSHS was the brainchild of a group of divers and educators who shared a hunger to explore the unknown depths of these waters. Entering into a formal agreement with the state of Michigan, the GLSHS has committed to preserving Lake Superior's shipwreck heritage, while also fueling further historical research. And this twin-pronged approach has led to some intriguing discoveries over the years. In order for their expeditions to be productive, the GLSHS needs to equip itself with high-quality, reliable diving and research tools. At the center of its arsenal is the 47-foot research vessel David Boyd, which is armed with a variety of equipment to plunge beneath the surface of Lake Superior to unearth its treasures. This GLSHS tech includes a Phantom S4 remotely operated vehicle, RAV, used to get a closer look at sites of interest, along with cutting-edge sonar equipment and some of the finest underwater HD cameras on the market. All this is used in tandem with the team's optimized navigational technology, enabling them to probe hitherto unexplored submerged terrain. In order to maximize their research efforts and broaden their exposure, the GLSHS has partnered with the Canadian Navy, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and media giants such as Discovery and the History Channel. And needless to say, over the years the GLSHS already has several groundbreaking discoveries to its name. A catalog of several notable finds culminated in 2007, when GLSHS researchers made their most fascinating discovery to date the shipwreck of the Cyprus, lying 460 feet below the surface just off the coast of Deer Park, MI. But what do the researchers do with their discoveries once they uncover them? Since the summer of 1985, information about the wonders that the GLSHS uncovered have been made available for all the public to view and enjoy. This was the time that the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum was opened. Despite being located at Chile Whitefish Point on the northern tip of Michigan, more than 12,000 people visited the museum in its first six weeks. And doubtless they did not leave disappointed. With a range of intriguing historical exhibits, the museum has excelled at presenting visitors with a window into the history of sea travel. The iconic exhibits include images from the comet, a steamer launched in 1857. But there's more than just insights into the comet and Cyprus to engage visitors. One unique find was the Vienna of Cleveland, a wooden steamship that was being used to tow another barge in 1892, when she met her untimely end. When this vessel collided with another ship, while the crew managed to evacuate unharmed, it spelled disaster for the Vienna. But even with so many fascinating exhibits already at the museum, GLSHS members always on the lookout for more deep-sea treasures. Satisfying their own curiosity is not GLSHS members' only ambition. They are also focused on imparting knowledge to future generations, to this end they provide internships for students both at the museum and while conducting maritime research. That's just another reason why it's so important to continue exploring the depths for further treasures. Late in 2021 the team at GLSHS returned to Lake Superior, bringing their state-of-the-art technology with them. Thrilled to be plumbing the depths again, the researchers climbed aboard the David Boyd and prepared to start exploring. Little did they know just how significant a site once the team had set sail, they began using their dual-frequency sonar to scan, map and analyze the lake bed. While examining the data, the team were excited by evidence of a large object. And further investigations later revealed things that would take them completely by surprise. Having spotted the object on the sonar, the team sent down their ROV to probe further. Upon closer inspection, it was apparent that they had stumbled upon a schooner, a type of small sailing ship. 
but it was this schooner's story that made this find so remarkable. The vessel at the bottom of the lake was soon identified as the remains of the dot. Apparently, in 1883 it was being towed by a steamship called the M.M. Drake, when suddenly, the schooner started to take on water. Already heavily laden with iron ore, the ship rapidly sank to the bottom, some 350 feet below the surface. But this find wasn't the only surprise awaiting the GLSHS on this 2021 expedition. While analyzing the dot, the team's side-scan sonar had picked up another unexplained object. Believe it or not, another shipwreck had taken place in fairly close proximity to the dot. Apparently, lightning can strike twice in the same spot. This second wreck turned out to be another schooner barge, the Frank W. Wheeler. Two years after the dot's demise, this slightly larger vessel was under tow in the same area when powerful winds swept across the lake, causing havoc for the sailors on board. Realizing that their boat was sinking, the crew realized that they had no choice other than to abandon ship. They escaped on lifeboats as the schooner vanished beneath the surface. Yet unbelievably, the 2021 discoveries of the David Boyd didn't end there. Finding one shipwreck in the underwater vastness of Lake Superior is impressive. Finding a second one nearby is astonishing. But finding three at once was unheard of until now, that is. Lying at a whopping 650 feet down were the remains of a third barge, later identified as the Michigan. Clearly, the Great Lakes were often unkind to schooners. In 1901 the steamer M.M. Drake was towing the Michigan a few miles west of Whitefish Point when suddenly, a gripping disaster story unfolded. And if the name M.M. Drake sounds familiar, well done, you've clearly been paying attention. Yes, this ship had also towed the ill-fated dot. Unfortunately, this time, the M.M. Drake would not escape unscathed either. As the weather worsened, massive waves started pummeling both ships, eventually causing them to collide. Fortunately, the crews of two nearby steamers saw what was unfolding and swooped in. Astonishingly, save for one unfortunate cook aboard the Michigan, all the crew members of both ships were saved from their doomed vessels. Finding three shipwrecks at once was an amazing feat. But the GLSHS team has also been commended for another important reason. It has searched more than 2,500 miles of the lake in just one year. This feat has expanded our knowledge of the area's history like never before. And there's one more way in which the GLSHS has exceeded all expectations. According to the museum's executive director Bruce Lynn, the GLSHS has located more shipwrecks in 2021 than it has in any other year in its history. So while the team has already succeeded in uncovering a wealth of stories and priceless artifacts to share with the world, it's clear that these impressive finds are highly unlikely to be their last. And these discoveries keep shifting too highlighted by a preserved shipwreck in the Great Lakes region that seemingly disappeared overnight. The ship in question was known as the City of Green Bay, though it was by no means a vessel without experience. For two years, the merchant schooner had battled the mighty waves of the Atlantic before being called to duty on the Great Lakes. The crew didn't think they had any reason to worry. Alongside the schooner Havana, the city of Green Bay set out from Escanaba, Michigan, in late September 1887, with 675 tons of iron ore as its cargo. The ships were headed for the port of Chicago, some 300 miles south, and it was a destination they'd never reach. On the evening of October 1, a violent storm blew in over Lake Michigan, sending both the city of Green Bay and the Havana far off course. As powerful gales and towering waves rocked the ore-loaded ships, Captain P.W. Costello feared he and his crew aboard the Green Bay wouldn't make it through the night. The following morning, as the storm continued to rage, locals of the town of South Haven spotted a distress signal just off the coast. As the city of Green Bay drifted rapidly southward, a life-saving team was dispatched in attempt to rescue the ship and its crew. But it was too late. Before help could arrive, the city of Green Bay ran aground on a sandbar, nearly tearing the ship apart. Even as the life-saving team managed to reach the crumbling wreckage, the might of the waves, combined with the Green Bay's massive weight, proved to be too much to overcome. Moments later, the ship split completely in two. As two of the city of Green Bay's masts collapsed, three crewmen were swept into the surging waters, they were never seen again. 
Desperately, the life-saving team fought to rescue the remaining three crew members in the end, only one survived. By the time the storm finally passed, the remnants of the city of Green Bay found a new home beneath the waves, settling in Deerlick Creek just off the shores of South Haven. For years, the wreckage served as a reminder of the tragic events of that day, though it's since become a feature of significance for the people of western Michigan. The wreck of the city of Green Bay is now a well-known point of interest, especially among locals with a passion for the area's history. Though the waters of Lake Michigan contain a number of similar shipwrecks, the Green Bay owes its popularity to its accessibility. Many people have flocked to the beach because it was so easy to see the wreck in about five feet of water, shared Valerie Van Heest, director of the Michigan Shipwreck Research Association MSRA. Its bones had remained lodged in a sandbar just north of the Deerlick Creek outlet, which is located three miles south of the South Haven Channel. But in early 2021, visitors who frequented the site of the wreck arrived at the shores of South Haven and were shocked by what they found. After 134 years in Deerlick Creek, the city of Green Bay was gone. No one could explain how this 100-plus year fixture had just suddenly vanished from its place beneath the waves. Had it been destroyed? Had someone moved it? Had the ship risen from its watery grave to sail once more? The possibilities seemed endless. But that May, one South Haven resident discovered the answer. As she gazed out the window from her property overlooking Lake Michigan, the woman spotted a large shape in the water some 50 feet out from the shore. Curious, she headed down to the water to investigate. As she reached the shoreline, she could just barely make out the mysterious object it was a ship. Being that the wreck hadn't been there before, the woman hurried to the nearby Michigan Maritime Museum to report her discovery. She told us she'd lived on the property for 40 years and they hadn't seen anything like that before, said Ashley Deeming, director of education and administration for the Michigan Maritime Museum. We have people report potential shipwrecks that they have found all the time, but in this particular instance, it was in an area we didn't know about. But was this the missing wreck of the city of Green Bay? The museum immediately contacted Van Heest and her team at the MSRA to find out. Because she'd surveyed the wreck of the Green Bay 15 years prior, Van Heest claimed she'd know the ship if she saw it, and as soon as they arrived at the site, the truth became clear. It was the city of Green Bay after all. But that begged one enormous question. How did the shipwreck manage to travel a half mile from its 134-year resting place? Well, according to Van Heest, the same conditions that sunk it in the first place likely brought the ship to its new home. Mother Nature had her way with this ship again, said Van Heest. Erosion, combined with a big storm, somehow lifted this ship from where it was embedded for over a hundred years and moved it south. Yet this had been no small shifting of sand. In 2020, the water levels in Lake Michigan had been higher than in previous years, resulting in significant erosion along the shorelines that helped rouse the city of Green Bay from its 134-year slumber. But according to Van Heest, there's a good chance the ship isn't done moving just yet. The remains now don't seem so embedded in the bottom. I would not be surprised to hear that after another big storm, it's no longer here, Van Heest revealed. We'll keep an eye on this. If it moves again, we'll go out and try to find its next resting place. Unfortunately, because the city of Green Bay has now settled on a strip of private beach, it's no longer accessible to curious onlookers still, most locals are just happy that this unusual mystery has finally been solved. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.